Alright, today we're going to show how to poke around different device firmware files such as routers. Now I have a TP-Link Archer C5 router. And to start this off, one of the things you normally do with your router is update it by downloading their little firmware update file. So I downloaded this straight from the TP-Link user support page. This is the update file. And we're going to show how to poke around it a little bit. Now one of the nice tools to do this with is a tool that's available for Linux called binwalk. So let's go ahead and I'm going to move into the directory that I downloaded it to. And you can see there, there's my Archer C5 update file. So let's poke around it with binwalk. Just type binwalk, the name of the file, and it'll automatically spout out if it's able to find some information about it. Now if you see here, we have not a whole lot at the beginning that looks too interesting. We have basically firmware header file, we're not interested in that. What looks like a uboot string, firmware header, and then LZMA compressed data, which is usually just usually not that interesting. Though we can poke around it, but what's interesting here is the SquashFS file system. Now SquashFS is a file system designed to be read-only for things that don't change often. So this is probably where the whole entire operating system and other files is stored. And we can read here that at the offset of 118016 bytes. That's where it starts. Now, luckily, it's at the very end, so we can just grab this piece all the way to the very end of the file and pull it out and take a look at it. So we're going to use a tool called DD, which is basically is a program that allows you to perform byte operations on a file to move it to one place or the other. So. Let's do dd input file equals archer c5. Um, if I remember right, it's skip is equal to. Ah, I forgot what the. Uh, the input file equals our archer file. Skip is equal to. Byte offset 1180160. Gonna set a block size of one. one. That way everything will copy over just fine. We're gonna specify output file equals archer.sqfs, which is the file prefix for squashfs. So let's go ahead and do that. And this will take a little bit as it pulls out all the data. So we'll wait. Now while we're waiting on that, I'm going to explain another tool that we're going to need shortly. There's a set of tools that can be in handy for corner cases called firmware mod kit. What this is is a collection of small programs or scripts that can do common operations on things that's specifically designed for poking around router routers and stuff and making your own images. So we may or may not need this, but I've installed it. All right, this is done. We now have two files, the regular one we downloaded and now archer.sqfs. Now, if you install squashfs tools on your distribution, then you'll have the ability to use a tool called unsquashfs. And this basically extracts any files inside of a squashfs file system. So let's point it at archer.sqfs. All right, so here's problem one, where it says LZMA uncompressed failed with error code nine. Now Googling this shows that a previous person ran into the same problem. And what it is, is that the developers of router firmware sometimes use non-standard stuff. Now one of these non-standard deals is a customized version of SquashFS 
and how it's different is it adds support for 7-zip and LZMA compression. Unfortunately, the default Unsquash FS tools don't have 7-zip LZMA compression built in. So, one of the nice things about firmware toolkit is that it provides a number of different uh, Unsquash FS tools. You can see this in here where it has Squash FS, Squash FS3, Squash FS 3.0 LZMA. And in the others folder, it provides more depending on what you need. There's a lot of non standard ones, but they've so they've tried to include all of them. So let's go ahead and poke around and see what we get. And this is in my opt folder. So let's do opt firmware mod kit source squash fs I don't know let's try three three is always and we know it uses LZMA so let's just try that out of curiosity and let's point it at the archer.sqfs file we have oh. let's run that with sudo <laughs> I forgot to point out the ex executable. We need to unsquash FS tool. Now let's run it. Okay, can't find so I have a super block on Archer C. Okay. So let's go and try one of the other ones. Let's just try squash FS 3.0. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. It says the squash FS version is 4. The one I used, as you can see above, is squash FS 3. So let's try in the other folder. Let's see what's here. Squash FS4 LZMA. Now let's point that one at Squash FS, see what we get. Hey, it looks like something happened. The only things we didn't extract from it is the. Um, inode devices which is basically just they're not real file in Linux they're not real files they're basically fake files that point at your hardware and by looking at the contents of those files you can read information about your hardware since we're not actually running in this on the modem we're not concerned concerned about that what we are concerned about is these 515 files that just got dumped so let's open this up in our file browser here. This is the bin that I downloaded earlier, this is the file that we extracted, and now we have a new folder, squashfs root. Now inside of here is the whole entire Linux operating system that it's running on top of. You can see the Linux or Linux kernel link there, and all the different files. So um, one of the things that's good for security to check out is if you're able to pull apart one of the images for your router is to poke around X shadow. Now what this file does is it stores the usernames that are registered with the system and the passwords that go along with them. The passwords are encrypted so you won't be able to tell what the passwords are only that they exist. So let's display this. So we can see here the normal default is to only have the root account for the device to use for itself. There should only ever be usually only one account that's registered with your router. If there's a second one, then that may indicate, depending on the device, a back door for other people to get in. And if the password is not secure and is short, Tools such as John the Ripper, which is a tool you can download and per you can provide it a list of words and it'll try to just start guessing at your password to see if it'll get a hit. If the password's short, you can either do the brute force or dictionary attack with John the Ripper to try to find the password. If they've chosen a strong long password, then you're not going to get past that and it's less of a security risk. So let's just quickly poke around at some other info here. 
just set of curiosity. We'll look at bin, which is all the programs are installed. You have a lot of networking tools. And there doesn't look like there's really anything too unnecessary in there. There's not a long list of programs. So all in all, in this case, for TP-Link, Archer C5, everything seems to look pretty good security-wise. So there's no blatantly open holes and things. Hope this was an informative video. Thank you.